So let me start by asking all the students here a question. Raise your hand if you have copied for an online exam. Around 80% of you are raising your hands, 20% uh, are liars. It's fine. Uh, so, just to be honest, okay, I have not copied for an online exam because I have never written an online exam. But as a teacher, I had to conduct an online exam way back in 2020 when we were least prepared for it, for the pandemic. We were running out of time, the students, the final year students had to pass. Uh, and so, this is the ingenious method we came up with in order to prevent copying while conducting an online exam. We told the students to log into Google Meet to make sure that the camera is turned on and the camera is facing their face and the answer sheet and they can write that exam for the next three hours while keeping the camera on their face and the answer sheet. Now, of course, I know this is not a foolproof method. A student can just open another tab and refer their notes uh, or they can just keep their material off to the side. One brilliant student, what did he do? He made sure that the camera was tilted slightly above so that his face was not visible. But the portrait of his late grandfather was visible on camera. The grandfather was also very proudly looking on. Look at how my grandson is copying. So nice. But I am telling you this story because I want to emphasize on one student who went full mission impossible for this task. And that's why I will tell you the story. What he did when he caught, when he got caught and later we found out, what he did was one day before the exam, he recorded a video of himself pretending to write the exam. Not just any video, three hour video. He was not taking any shortcuts. If only he put this much effort and creativity into his studies. But how did he get caught? You know, because I can't be just uh, spreading this part of India. How did he get caught? It was a very easy thing. Uh, the teacher asked him, please tilt your camera so that your answer sheet is visible. Now, he can't do that because it's a recorded video. So, suddenly from his screen, we saw the pause icon appear followed shortly by the VLC player logo and that is how he got caught. But this got me thinking, like the exam which they were copying for, do you know what that exam was, the sheer irony, they were copying for professional ethics. This got me thinking, why is it that we cheat in exams, why is it that uh, we usually often, not just all of us, we have cheated in exams. Uh, the short answer is of course, we can just say that. Uh, the current education system values marks over knowledge. Marks over knowledge, that is why the current system, we cheat in exams. But you know what, I am just not going to leave it at that. It is a very short, uh, the world's shortest TEDx talk. Let me elaborate and for the next few minutes, I am going to try and convince you that we should encourage students to make more mistakes. Now, as students, you might be delighted, you get to make more mistakes. As teachers, you are already cursing me. Why do you want to encourage them to make more mistakes? They are already making spelling mistakes in their name. So, that is why. Let me try to convince you. And for that, I am going to ask you a question. It is an incomplete sentence and I want you to answer as quickly as possible. Okay, I want you to answer as quickly as possible without thinking. And the sentence is A for apple. Now, that is something which we study. The first thing which we study in class, right? It is uh, when we come to school. A for apple. Not so much as study or learn or comprehend, but basically by heart. Some one of you even said it in the exact same rhyme scheme as well, A for apple. And this process does not change later on when we go. The entire process is about basically remembering the same thing over and over. It is not that A for apple is the only word that starts with A. There are other words which start with A, right, which you can teach a child. And this is not just the huge list, this is just the list of words which I could come up on the top of my head. There are tens of thousands of words which start with the letter A. But these are, we always teach A for apple and that method we just kind of propagate later on. And the reason why is because our current education system is focused way too much on answers. Getting the answer, getting the answer right, how fast you can get the answer. And that's what we value more than anything else in our current education talk, including your own TEDx. It's the solve for why was basically based on an answer. It's not based on questions, right? So that is why this system currently focuses not just on answers, but also unnecessary competition. But human civilization was not built 
on answers and unnecessary competition. Human beings are inherently a creative uh, being. We like creative problem solving and we like asking questions. Think back to the time when you were young. You would deny our parents with questions such as, why is the sky blue? Later on when you came to school or college or you are working, you would ask yourself questions when you are not being productive. Why do I procrastinate so much? And then of course there are other questions as well which keep a lot of people uh, awake at night. So why is it that students entirely, we are as human beings, we ask questions but then we are forced in a system which dehumanizes us and makes us entirely about answers. And I would like to point out to one fault in the education system. Through all my research, through all this time, what I realized is the one thing which every education system has in common is that it is centered around exams. The entire system is exam centric and the fact that the notes you take, the classes you attend, what you study, what you don't study, etc. depends, all leads towards the exam. And after that, what happens, your results determine how your parents like you, which people you hang out with, how your teachers treat you, what job you get, what career you get, etc. It's way too much focused on exams. It reduces students to nothing but numbers and grades. But what is a subjective experience like for a student in this system? What is the subjective? Let me just talk about an average student in this system of grades and numbers and answers and exams. An average student would wake up in the morning, sleep deprived, tired, they have no choice, they have to get to class on time, so they skip breakfast, get ready, head to class just in time. As the teacher walks in, teacher starts moving their mouths, start emitting sounds. The student is, has to translate that into the paper, not really understanding what is entirely going on. This seems really boring, so the student pulls out their phone, their crush still has not responded to them. Now the teacher catches them using their phone in class and then suddenly the student pretends like they have never seen a mobile phone ever in their life ever. And this sort of survival instinct keeps on happening for a few hours until you head back home. Uh, you decide uh, you have some time, uh, your crush still has not responded to you. So you decide to stalk this person on social media. You know, you, you can spend some time on relaxing, right? You can, And it's already 2 a.m. in the morning. Now you have to stay up late once again to complete your assignment, your work, etc. And this happens for days, for weeks, for months, until it's 24 hours before an exam. The panic has not set in yet, but you have realized that you don't know anything about this subject. But you know what, it's fine. 24 hours is ample time for you to actually figure it out. Let's uh, relax with some social media, let's procrastinate a bit. And it's six hours before the exam. Now you start panicking. You suddenly become best friends with the most studious uh, person in class. You ask them what are the important syllabus, what all you need to study, what all can you skip. You know what, it's fine, you're just going to by heart all the diagrams and then you'll figure out the answers as you go into the exam hall. So for the very last minute, you mug up as aggressively as you can before running into the exam hall, violently vomiting your answers into the answer sheet, hoping that your teachers will grade it well. You walk outside dehydrated, disoriented, defeated, you check your phone, your crush has now blocked you on social media. But in the end, now you have a degree, you've learned nothing and now you have less friends, the end. So this is the system which we were following. This is the subjective experience of a student or of an average student. But something happened in 2020 that changed everything completely. What happened? The pandemic happened. Before the pandemic, your teachers were commanding you, keep that phone away and pay attention in class. Now your teachers are requesting you, please get on your phone and pay attention in class. Before you wrote exams, now you wrote open book assignments with three hour time limits. Everything completely changed during the pandemic. Many people say the pandemic broke the education system. I do not believe so. The pandemic exposed the cracks in the education system. But what did we do? Once the situation improved and we could have classes offline, we went right back to the exact same system that was following, the exact same flawed system. How is it that we as a society blame students for walking into an exam hall completely unprepared and forgetting everything the moment they step outside when we did the exact same? The pandemic was our test and we all failed. So this brings me to the next topic which is about failure. Because when I said we all failed, it sounded a bit harsh, right? Because after all, we all often say failure is the stepping stone to success. But that is not used as a learning experience, but it's more used as an excuse. Uh, failure is being the stepping stone to success. 
uh, and I'll tell you why. Because our current education system entirely demonizes the concept of failure. If you fail, your life is over. Remember back in 10th standard when they used to tell you that this is the year. If you don't study and you don't pass, life is over. Then you actually passed 10th standard, life was not over, you continued, got to 12th standard. This year if you don't study, your life is over. Then you actually got into 12th standard, you got into a nice college. Uh, and then during college they will tell you, if you don't study here, your life is over. But then you actually get into a job and then your life is actually over. <laughs> so what is this failure that we demonize as part of the education system? Uh, and what causes that? I would say it's twofold. One, as I already mentioned, it's all about answers, getting the answer right. Doesn't matter what you uh, creatively problem solve. It's about you, did you get the right answer or not, yes or no. The second factor, I believe, is teachers. Now to clarify, I am not calling for the eradication of every teacher from the education system. Okay. Uh, because I myself being a teacher, I like having a monthly salary so I can buy biryani and other things. It's a very comfortable life. But what I am talking about is teachers right now as we have in the education system, they stand in front and they address a class of other people. Mostly one way communication. Interaction between student and teachers very limited outside of the core subject. Interaction between students is not at all encouraged. So obviously when you take this system online, what else did you expect to happen? Students earlier, they had to somehow study, memorize and try to get answers. Now they can have access to their notes even when it's online, no one is there to uh, basically control them. It was a low risk, high reward endeavor for them. And when it comes to classes, the entire choice is taken away from the students and the entire responsibility of studies is put entirely on the head of the teacher. So obviously, students don't really like joining an online class because why? What's in it for them? Makes sense, right? So this is at the point where you might be wondering, what can we even have a system that doesn't involve student uh, answers and teachers at the center? And I present to you this very event, this very TEDx talk which you have. This is organized primarily by students and it is not at all about getting the right answer. It is about asking different questions. What sort of stage decoration should we do? What sort of lighting and camera work should we do? Whom should we invite as guests? Is it okay to invite a stand-up comedian in the year 2022 for a TEDx event? All these important questions they have to ask themselves. And then of course, they will stay up late, they will stay hungry, they will be struggling, they will be working hard against their own body. But the things which these TEDx organizers and organizers of any fest or event study from all these events and their experience cannot be taught in any classroom. So this is why having a student centric, question centric sort of system helps. In fact, there is this beautiful quote which I like called memory is the residue of thought. As long as you think, you will remember. As long as there is some thought in your mind when it comes to handling things, you will remember that. But in class where the teacher has the entire control, has the entire responsibility, they are thinking on your behalf. You don't think in class, therefore you don't remember. Say, but on the other hand, all these events, it is entirely different. So that is why I would encourage people, as in students should have their own choice. They should be co-authors of their own education. They should make mistakes. And it's fine. And they can learn from it and then they can grow. Now you might be wondering, how can we make mistakes? You don't have time in this competitive world for making mistakes. Well, to simply put, I'll give you my own life story as an example. I was someone who did B.Tech in Computer Science Engineering. I did not do that B.Tech because society forced me to. I wanted to do engineering and I want to do it in computers because I like programming. After that, I got into a reputable company and I became a software engineer, but I hated every day of it. I got everything which I wanted and I was still miserable. And all this entire time while I was there, I just kept going from day to day suffering until around six years as my career into a software engineer, I decided to finally rectify my mistake. I resigned from software engineering, took a complete U-turn in my career, became a teacher and simultaneously a stand-up comedian. And I have not regretted that choice ever. So if it's not too late for me, after six years, it's never too late for you all as well. Because making mistakes is one of the things which we often worry about, right? Now, 
again, you might still be asking, you can't change the entire education system in a day. That makes sense. So, here are some small changes which you can do from my perspective as well. Often students, uh, they ask me questions such as, uh, how can I improve my English? Earlier, I used to just tell them things like, you know what, uh, you should watch more movies, you should talk, speak more English, uh, you can read more, etc, etc. But then I realized halfway through that these things work for me. Me as a human being, this works. Doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. So, I changed my approach. When someone asks me, uh, how can I improve my English, I will switch over and I will ask them, why, what do you think is wrong with your English? Why do you need to improve your English? What do you do in your free time that we can incorporate learning English as part of it? All these different elements we decided to include. Now, it's earlier it was about me as a teacher giving the right answer. Now, it is about you as a student and based on questions. So, now once again you might be wondering, yeah, this is a small change which we can make. But uh, often times we say like if we let students make mistakes, if they have their own freedom, their own choice, they will waste it, they are just being lazy. And I say I do not think they are being lazy, I do not think students are being lazy. And I present to you this one graph, there is a number of suicides among students since the year 1997 because we do not have data before 1997. And this is not going in a direction that is favourable to us. Even if the statistic is 1, we still failed as a system. And now we are just compounding all our failures together. Why can't we change the system? Because if it is not for the students, who is it for? And the students are not being lazy. They just do not want to take the additional stress and become another statistic in this graph. It is simply the choice which they made. So, bringing, coming back to the original point is why do we copy uh, or why do we cheat in exams? It is simply because students are doing what human beings do. They are doing creative problem solving. At that point, it does not matter about uh, critical thinking. They decided, I want to get more marks. What is the best way I can get more marks? Obviously, it is through cheating. It is creatively problem solving that. And of course, instead of asking questions or anything, it is what it is entirely about getting the answer right. So, that is why my appeal to you all, what we can do, what all of us can do is we encourage students to ask mistakes, to have their own choice. And then of course, learn and grow from that and we as educators, as parents, as teachers, we can support you all. Because in the end, this education system right now is producing numbers. How about at least now, after all these years, after tens of years of TEDx talks about the education system and all its faults, that we finally take some effort and we create a system that produces human beings.